I would like to introduce Mike Stefanik. Hi, Mike. my name is Mike Stefanik. I'm going to talk to you today about my business, The Eureka Room, and my 10 plus year odyssey in making it a reality. Uh, what is the Eureka Room? According to my website, it's a magical place in East Austin. Come with friends or join others. Choose from a menu of five to 40 minute experiences. Enter the room, follow the automated instructions. What will happen? Question mark. That's the extent of the description on the website. Uh, the Eureka Room is enjoyed best if you don't know anything about it. And that's going to make this talk a little difficult since I don't want to spoil it. Um, so since I don't want to spoil it, I, I'm not going to talk too much about what it is. What I'm going to do is talk about where it's been and the 10 years it's taken me to get to where it's at right now. And if you like what you hear, then hopefully you'll come check it out uh, after the pandemic. I apologize for leaving so mysterious, but I think that the story I'm going to tell is pretty interesting and I hope that you think so too. So let me start by giving a little background on me. Uh, I've been in the roadside attractions and weird and wonderful and curious experiences for as long as I can remember. Most of my vacations use Atlas Obscura as my travel guide. Uh, Atlas Obscura, if you don't know, is a website filled with weird and wonderful places to visit. Even as a teenager, I worked at a 100-year-old amusement park during the summers. Uh, my background is in engineering, but about a decade ago, I started my own company making these. Uh, it's called the Austin Events Wall Calendar, and it's a wall calendar for Austin. It shows you when over 250 events and activities happen, and it's just inspired by my love of experiences. I've also created a lot of events on my own, many of them to promote the calendar, such as the Austin Stationary 5K, I got a bag of wigs, let's wear them, I made an extra cup of coffee, who wants it? And a bunch of others I designed, some of them happened, some of them didn't because of the pandemic. Uh, one of the bigger projects I did was to create a gigantic cornhole game that you can see here that I, uh, uh, many friends helped out and made that a reality. And it's also for sale. Uh, and this year I created the Austin Messy Homes Tour, which we did over Zoom. You can uh, view that. It was a live show, game show. You can view that at uh, messyhomestour.com. And another event I did were Slack Athlons, billed as Decathlons for the rest of us. Here's some of the events involved in those. Uh, so I've been creating events and experiences for a long time, and you can see most of them are kind of on the stranger, more experimental side of things, and the Eureka Room is definitely no different. Uh, so let's start at the beginning of the Eureka Room. It first germinated in 2008. Uh, it was originally this idea of rock and roll yoga that I uh, had brainstormed up. You can see here in my stream of consciousness notes, it evolved into from rock yoga to the Eureka Room. And the idea was it would be this mystery room of different experiences you could choose from. And uh, I had a different vision of what it might look like. Here's a photo of the outside. I kind of pictured it looking like a texas -y shack inside maybe a waiting room. And then you go down a long, weird, futuristic hallway to a more futuristic looking uh, room. And then once you get in there, the program starts and it's something like this. Here's a few slides I made from, there's a few slides I found from way back in 2008. So that was the vision. And I had a room in my house that I cleared out and I started to build this uh, prototype of this Eureka room. So here you can see some pictures of the first construction of the first iteration of the Eureka room. I built a frame, I got some black plastic, I stapled it to my ceiling and my walls. I had a projector screen. Uh, I was gonna project uh, these strange 
movies onto it. And uh, it really just looked like a creepy dungeon. Uh, a friend came over and looked at it and asked if she was going to be murdered. Uh, besides the creepiness, it also didn't have... Uh, the black plastic was very, really reflective and it just didn't have the dark sort of feel that I wanted with the forward facing projector and they're just technical issues. So I put it back on the shelf. I took down the plastic and the framing and I rented the room out on Airbnb for a while. Around 2013, I was getting more to positive psychology techniques and practices. And uh, I was finding the techniques really valuable to me. And I thought, why aren't other people doing these? And my guess was maybe that the practices just didn't seem very accessible. Uh, it didn't look fun to people. And so I couldn't help but to think of the cat meditation program from a few years back. And that maybe I was on to something and maybe I could use some lighthearted fun to help people explore things like meditation and journaling. This time, instead of a room, it would be a one or two day conference and I was calling it Happiness Interactive Lab. And you would choose from different sessions each hour. Some of them would be more serious practices like meditation, visualization, affirmations. And then some would be fun, lighthearted, and a little weird like laughter yoga, barnyard chanting, a kitten corral, and something called the screaming box. Uh, I brainstormed over 250 ideas with different friends and people. And you can see them all on my blog if you're interested. Um, I uh, sought out potential facilitators, uh, locations to have the event. Uh, I made a website. I did a ton of other work on it. And I, there were just a lot of challenge with, challenges with this. Eventually, I decided it was going to be really hard to reconcile this seriousness and this weirdness. Uh, and it was going to be difficult. We might ha have a situation where we have one group over here that is very serious. Somebody's having uh, an emotional release of some sort. And then right next to them is a group uh, clucking like chickens and mooing like cows. And they, you know, it's going to bring them down if, if this guy over here is crying and this guy over here crying is not going to want to hear these people moving like cows. Uh, so these are, it's not really synergistic, uh, to say the least. So I, I wanted to be sensitive to the needs of both of these groups and people in both states, but it seemed like putting them together was just going to create some kind of whiplash going from one session to the other. And so instead, I decided I would just offer up one program at a time. Uh, people come and just take what they needed without being distracted with a, a different sort of experience, uh, which led me back to a singular room idea. So we're back to the same room I was in years ago. I pull out the same two by fours. I build a new frame. We put white walls this time. And at the same time, I've made five videos that mix positive psychology and this element of fun. And I'm calling it mindful tainment. Uh, these videos took me a couple hundred hours easy, and they were really just rough sketches. Uh, so the idea was to have this room with a big projector screen on it. You can see here I use a TV, but I was going to use a projector screen and a little bit of mood lighting that matches the, the video as it changes. Uh, as you can see from the photos, it looks a little lame. I really wanted something brighter, and around the same time, Mickey Delp had built me this thing called the magic table. You can see it here. It was for another project and it was way more colorful and interesting and used LEDs. And I said, what if we, I was thinking, what if we put those on the wall? Uh, I don't know how many. And uh, so I asked Mickey, I asked around and I got turned on to Noah White who builds this kind of thing. And he came over and we talked and we brainstormed. And we got excited. Next thing you know, I got 15,000 LEDs in this room. And it's awesome. I'm not going to go into the engineering too much here because that would be a whole talk in and of itself. Uh, I do know how most of it works. Noah built most of it. And, uh, but feel free to ask me questions afterward or email me. So we finished the room and I have two weeks until the East Austin Studio Tour. The East Austin Studio Tour is 
a tour of artist studios, hundreds of them around East Austin. That happens over two weekends and people just go in and out of different studios. Uh, I told them the Eureka Room would have two programs to show people. And so I had to hustle to create the two programs I had promised. And those programs are still being shown at the Eureka Room. So I'm not going to say too much about them, um, but I'll give you some idea of what people experienced. The first was called Color Color, and it was just a passive program. You go sit in the room with some other people and you watch the light show and listen to the music. And it's, it's a really just basic, uh, here's how it works, uh, safe choice. Uh, the second program was definitely more experimental and it was called High Five. Uh, you stand in the room with four to 10 other people and a crazy voice tells you to high five a lot. And it was just fun, absurdity with strangers. And it's something I borrowed from the Happiness Interactive Lab sessions. Uh, I managed to get Wayne Allen Brenner from the Chronicle to come over and review the Eureka Room. He was literally the first person to see the programs, which was probably not the best thing to do, but I didn't have a lot of time. Uh, he only watched the first program and he asked some questions and then he left. And I was worried because I didn't know what he thought of it. Uh, but I got a really great review, including what might be my favorite response to the Eureka Room ever, which is this. So thanks to the review, I had over 500 people visit the Eureka Room during the two weekends of the tour. Uh, the response was way better than I had even hoped for. Uh, many people thought it was fun, funny, energizing, crazy, and just really enjoyed it. One surprising thing was everybody had ideas on what I should do with it or what I could do with it or what they wanted me to do with it. And like, whether it was like more arty, more story, more immersive, making music videos, doing team building, uh, there's just so many ideas that people had and, and it sparked a lot of ideas in people. But I was set on this Michael Tamba thing, so that's what I went forward with after the tour. So I was really happy with the way the tour went, and I was also happy to get back to the mindful tainment programs I had made. And during the tour, I collected email addresses from people who liked the Eureka Room and had a good experience there. And I emailed them saying, hey, I got these other programs, you wanna come over and test them for me? And people were really interested in that. So I set up a schedule of about maybe 20, 30 people to come test these different programs I made. And I just picked two of the programs to get their feedback on. Uh, so let me show you a little bit of each of those programs. So the first one was called Word Cloud. And what it did was it asked you a question and then flashed a bunch of words on the screen. And the idea was like you would, your mind would just go to the word that was the answer to the question. So it asked you, um, you know, what do you want for dinner? And it would flash you a bunch of food and you would, your brain would just tell you what you want. Your subconscious would tell you what you want and uh, you would get the answer that way. And then you could write a little bit about it. So it did that for about 20 or 30 questions. Uh, it was terribly awkward. And uh, I'll give you just a little sample here of what that was like. Where should you go soon? So this was a different experience than they had during the East Austin studio tour. Uh, the second program was called Emotional Conjuring. And that one would show you a word on the screen and ask you to feel it, which hindsight's 2020, that doesn't seem like a super fun thing to do. Um, and I don't think it was even based on any science I had ever read, but I just threw up a series of 60 words and people were asked to feel whatever the word said. Uh, so you can probably tell where this is going. Let me give you a little sample of how that program works.
as you might expect, they hated it. I like, hated it. And uh, I felt really bad uh, when I asked one guy what he thought of it. He just looked at me and said very sternly, don't tell me what to do. So there was another group, uh, another group who came, one of the women said that she almost walked out and I felt really bad because she had really enjoyed the East programs and was a very big uh, supporter of what I was doing. And now I had put them through this torture. Uh, they were very nice and stuck around to help me see the light. I, and that the main thing being that this, this feeling of well-being and happiness is not, I couldn't go as direct as I was going. I can't just say, oh, well, go feel this and uh, you'll problem solved. And that, in fact, the stuff I was doing during East was more effective because those sorts of feelings are more of a side effect of doing other things. I was having a personal struggle between, oh, is this weird stuff really that valuable because this positive psychology stuff really works? And I was just hung up on the fact that maybe the fun stuff wasn't all that valuable. Now, when I tell the story as I have here, I'm sure it's much more obvious what my calling was all along for the Eureka Room. It's the weird, fun stuff. And that's what I do. Um, I went the long way around, but I'm here now. And uh, since I made this discovery, I've been working on new programs that are aligned with the mission of creating joy through this charming absurdity. And things have been going much, much better and more smoothly. Uh, I've been reading a lot of books on creating experiences and surprises and fun and reading books uh, on video games and anything that can help make the experiences better for visitors. Uh, I started a blog, IRLXD.com, where I post twice a week about things I've created or what I'm working on. And uh, I did the East Austin Studio Tour again uh, in 2019 with a program called Turkey Volcano. We had over 600 people come for that and that was great. Uh, lots of great responses to that as well. Um, I've had over 1200 people come through my house now to experience the Eureka Room. Which brings me to the present day where I'm looking for a space to put the Eureka Room, which is not my house, uh, maybe 500 to 1500 square feet central to East Austin, I could go further. If you or someone you know might be a fit for that, uh, has some space, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, a few more things before I wrap up. Uh, I'm here to help you on your crazy project. If I can, please feel free to reach out, if, especially if you got some uh, really nebulous, strange project, I would love to uh, help you if I can. Um, check out EurekaRoom.com if you want to know when you can visit the Eureka Room again. There's a newsletter you can sign up for. And if you want to know the projects that I'm working on, you can go to IRLXD.com to read my blog. And uh, thanks everybody for listening. I really appreciate your time. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you will come visit the Eureka Room when you can. And I guess we're going to do the Q&A now. Okay, so I'm going to do another test. I was muted. Hi. Let's have audio and video. Cool. Tech. So, fantastic talk, Mike. Um, it's such a tease, though. The Eureka Room, I can tell you from my experience, is amazing. It's really mind-blowing. And uh, I hope people got some sense of that. Um, and it's really nice to hear the, the, the story, the history of creating it. Uh, definitely go to Mike's links. Um, and uh, when the Eureka Room opens again, uh, be there. It's awesome. So let's do some Q&A. <clears throat> uh, we have a couple of questions uh, from the chat. Um, first question, Mike, is 
Uh, what places or sources do you draw most of your inspiration from for the programming of the Eureka Room? Oh, man. Um, that's a good question. Uh, most of what I do is I just sit down, drink a lot of coffee, and just write and write and write and write. And uh, most of what I write is terrible ideas. And then uh, eventually there's some in there that seem like they might be good. Uh, I try to think of things that are just unique and not really reminiscent of too many other things. Um, it's not really a great answer, but that's kind of the process I go through. Okay, fair enough. That's cool. Well, uh, so uh, of your other projects, what, what's the most fun project you've worked on? Of, uh, of all the projects? Um, oh man. Uh, well, I like the Eureka Room a lot, uh, but other than that, uh, some friends and I did these curious dinners, these absurdist dinners that involved about 10, 10 to, around 10, 10 hosts and 12 guests and a variety of entertainment. Uh, and that was just a lot of fun because it's just totally crazy, weird thing that we got to do with friends. Curious dinners, huh? Yes, yes. Did you go to one, Mickey? I cannot recall. Uh, I went to two. Oh, you went to two. Oh, and I, I'm I'm the host, so I'm supposed to pretend to be uh, objective. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mickey. <laughs> yeah, they were super cool. Uh, like it was a surrealist dinner party. Um, so yeah, uh, that uh, of of your projects, that's one of my favorites as well. Can you can you talk about some of the technical challenges that uh, arose in building? The Eureka okay. Room, which we only caught glimpses of here, but clearly it's a technological marvel. Uh, well, I won't claim that I did any of the technology. Uh, I do know how it works. Um, and I, I did have to struggle with a lot of the problems because it was trial and error. Uh, the first version, like I said, the, the, the front facing projector put too much light in the room. Even the second version, we were still using front facing projector. and. You just couldn't get it dark because projectors project some amount of light no matter what. Um, things like the uh, the projector didn't really fit where I needed to, so I had to cut a huge hole in my closet to get it to project. Um, <laughs> the thing falling down or nearly falling down a few times, uh, the the screen peeling off the back a lot of times. Uh, the technical issues I had with Touch Designer. Um, learning Final Cut, which I didn't know anything about. Uh, uh, most of the stuff, if not all the stuff Noah did, uh, turned out great and is still working two years later. Uh, most of the stuff I touched uh, is, uh, it, it's good now, it's a long road. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, uh, fantastic. Thank, thanks again uh, for being on, Mike. Sure. Really fascinating talk. Thank you very sure, much. Thank you.